Hello everyone, this is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and welcome to episode number 102 of the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues. We will be on uh, uh, today's dialogue with uh, Steve Carriage out of the United Kingdom. Um, as you guys are logging in, if you'd be kind enough to say where you're logging in from and hit the like button and feel free to continue doing so uh, throughout the dialogue. Um, my dialogue partner today, Mr. Carriage, he has worked, um, he's done a tremendous amount of work as a Bruce Lee raconteur, as you'll hear me call him, and uh, author. And his, uh, his, his reputation does precede him from around the world. And so I take great pleasure in welcoming uh, to the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues, Mr. Steve Carriage. This sounds better. Uh, that's a lot better. I can hear you now. Yeah, I couldn't hear you before. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I think um, because because it's that, that that's outfit. I think they're based in Ukraine. Um, and, yeah, and I think that when when we both go on to their servers, like it affects our Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna look uh, into yeah. I'm gonna look into hard wiring my um, my internet connection when I use them, and if that works, then I'll I'll be back in business. Uh, Anyhow, you, enough of that. You lost, you lost me at the Ukraine bit. <laughs> 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 How you doing, buddy? Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> so listen, yesterday you said um, you you mentioned something about finishing up teaching um, yeah. in order to get here, right? Mm -hmm. So that's at um, I'm assuming that that's at Essex Kickboxing Academy, correct? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so give me the background mm -hmm. on that. Um. <sighs> The actual well, we're actually been operating for about thirty-five years now. Wow! Um, I mean, I started like many people back in, you know, with, with karate. Right. Um, and just developed from there. It's sort of full contact karate, kickboxing, whatever it whatever it took to to punch <laughs> someone. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> um, what's never, the Muay Thai? What's your Muay Thai lineage? Um, I haven't really got them. I've been going to Thailand uh, for the last two decades nearly. Okay. I'm training in the Thai gyms uh, with many good Thai boxing trainers. Um, right. I'm not a Thai boxer. I don't have a claim to be a Thai boxer. I'm not. It's just so. I, I've always enjoyed martial arts, obviously, like, like right. we all do. And to me, um, Thai boxing is very full on. Um, what can I say about it, really? I mean, I, I've never... I will teach elements of Thai boxing. Okay. Muay Thai in, in what, what I basically do. I will go and... If I pick up something that I think, oh, that's good, we can use that, you know, where, without trying to sound like Bruce Lee. <laughs> right. It is, it is what it is. You know, you go, okay, well, that's good. That's a different method of throwing that particular kick or punch. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's some things I do that I don't particularly like. And, and some things I do, I do like, you know, and um, it certainly changed my way of kicking mm -hmm. over the last couple of decades, really, because they tend to kick more with a shin. Yeah. They tend to be more concentrated on power. Yeah. Um, as opposed to uh, to a snappy sort of front, uh, like a flicky side kick or a roundhouse kick, you know. Mm -hmm. They tend to kick more, as you say, with a shin and obviously your knee, and there's a lot more talk in the hip and, and so forth. Um, so I, I tend to... I tend to look at when I'm teaching someone. It depends if I'm doing a class. You get a general view of, you know, of what of, 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 a bit of everything, you know, because obviously you've got people of different levels, different mindsets, and whatever. Uh, so you get a general class. When I'm teaching one to one, then it's an individual thing. So I'll look at that person and see what basically turns them on. Right. Um, um, what suits them? Okay. So you you mentioned the 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 snap. You can hear me, okay, right? Yeah, fine. Yeah, good. Okay. good. All right. Um, you mentioned the, the snappy kick, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that because I'm assuming mm -hmm. that, like everybody of a particular generation, you got your start through mm -hmm. Kung Fu films in England. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> see, I started training in October 1973. Okay. 
So that is, uh, wait, let me, wait, let me see. That is, that might that's, be what, two, two, that, that's two months after, after Enter the Dragon debuted, right? In the UK, it was, it was I think it was uh, January 74, actually. It actually uh, was shown. Yeah, in, in the States, it was August, wasn't it? It was August. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was a 10-year-old kid, you know, okay. to me, just prior to that, um, I remember my dad tried to take me boxing a couple of times, but they wouldn't take me because I was too young. Okay. Uh, and then um, prior to that even, and I've still got the book somewhere, um, it was my dad had a book on karate, on karate by um, something Harrison, I forget now, but it was a, there was no photographs in the book. It was just, it's just like, as you look at it, it's just drawing, stick men drawings, yeah. you know, uh-huh. Uh-huh. And different hand positions and stuff. And I remember as a kid, I'm guessing here, I'm probably five, six, seven years of age, you know, like fascinated with this book. Right. And I remember going around to my cousin's friend's house. My cousin was a lot older, you know, I mean, where I was sort of five or six, he was probably 18, 19, you know, so... It wasn't a cousin I used to hang around with. Obviously, it was a different, a different generation. But I remember going around with my dad and my cousin's friends. You know, he had the big handlebar moustache. You know, it was. I'm talking about probably late sixties. You know, and he had his black belt on the wall. And he had a, a pair of nunchuckers on the wall. I always remember that. Um, mm-hmm. But there was the Okinawa and the other string, the octagon, uh, hectagon, uh, you know, ones, you know, not, not the round ones, you know, uh-huh. and. Um, that always sort of stuck in my mind. So this is all pre Kung Fu, Bruce Lee on the scene. Uh, well, from over here anyway. So that I always had that sort of an interest in it. And it wasn't until you know Bruce Lee came on the scene, and, and, oh, and obviously the David Carradine Kung Fu series. You got to look at that because that is a you know love it or hate it. It's still <laughs> yeah, but it's a big part of. It's right. what got everyone going, you know, you can watch that every week on the TV. Yeah. And don't forget, in the UK, we can go to the cinema and watch Bruce Lee at, at sort of like 10 years of age. We have to be 18. You couldn't get in, a, you couldn't get in an X certificate. What, what was up with the, the, the people in England and Kung Fu films, <laughs> man? You could get it in Barbados, you could get in, yeah, you could get right. in at, at, at almost any age. And then, didn't they censor your stuff yeah. heavily? Yeah, and the nunchuckers were cut out. There was a couple of little bits as well, but the main, the main part was missing was a nunchucker, and the main one was obviously Wild the Dragon. But that was released in the UK. The first one to be released in the UK was Fist of Fury, and that was the day before Bruce Lee died. Whoa! That was the nineteenth of July. Yeah. Um, I don't remember that. Obviously, it was before I was, but it was. I've got all the all the documentation for that now, you right. know, and uh, it was at the Rialto in London. Yeah. And um, after that, I believe it was the big boss. Uh, then it was End of the Dragon. Why the Dragon was the last one. Okay. Uh, okay. We won't even talk about Game of Death because it's, as far as I'm concerned, that film was a pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't the film that Bruce Lee was going to make. So I, not, I know. Yeah. It, it, just, just forget that. You know, just forget I know. that. Yeah. You just fast forward that to the, like the last, you know, 10 minutes yeah, or something. Just, right. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, um, um, so, so it took you into training where like, like traditional Japanese. Oh, yeah. Stuff? I mean, there was no Kung Fu clubs about then. Okay. All we could do was either boxing, judo or karate. Okay. And we done a bit of judo at school, but, um, it never had that appeal at the time, obviously, because it wasn't, it wasn't, um, wasn't punch and kick. It wasn't Bruce Lee. It wasn't, you know, David Carradine, if you like, you know. Right, yeah. Um, so I went to a karate club um, not too far from my house. My dad took me there. And, um, yeah, that was my start, really. And, you know, and that was in se- late 73, October 73, because my birthday's in October. So I remember I just got a karate so so it was, it was that, that period of time. Okay. Then, so, all right, keep going, keep going. Sorry. No, sorry. so I, I can go on forever bad, but I went, I mean, I, I just carried on. I, I carried on my karate because straight after the karate club opened up, so we, I started karate, so I say, Kung Fu Club started opening up within a year, if not less, mm-hmm. because the Bruce Lee thing went mental. You know, it's. it's it was, were these guys legitimate? These Kung Fu guys, were they legitimate Kung Fu? Who knows? Uh-huh. Who knows? Um, do you know what I mean? The thing is, 
so when I first started karate, there was no kung fu clubs about. The, the kung fu craze hadn't quite started. It was just starting, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, say, till the following year, Enter the Dragon came out, and then it started. 74 was the year that it really right. bit, you know. It really, yes. So late 73, it was just on the on the eve of it, you know. So, But I remember seeing a, a magazine in the, in the shop. My mum went and bought it for me in the end, you know, and... Um, and I'm just coming with this magazine, Bruce was on the cover, and uh, mm -hmm. a cinema magazine. And, you know, that was, I was hooked, you know, and then uh, shortly after that, I think, I can't remember the date now, No Kung Fu Monthly came out, and it went from there, really. But it just, and, but from 74 onwards, that's when it really, really, really got mental. Right. Yeah. But the Kung yeah. Fu clubs opened up, I don't know whether they was genuine. I, I wasn't interested by then, because I'm very... And so once I stuck my mind on it, I, I, I thought, I said, I'm not going to deviate. I'm going to stick to that. I'm going to do my grades in that. Yeah. And I stuck to that. And I got my black belt in 77, 78. Uh, then I got my second down in 1980. And my third down in 85, I think, 84. I can't remember that. But by that time, that was my karate. I'd done, although I teach kickboxing now, I was never a kickboxer. I was never, it's, you know, it's, I train with a lot of boxers. Uh, I, I learned to box. Um, <laughs> by learning from boxers and putting a pair of gloves on and just punching mm -hmm. things or punching people, and, <laughs> right. but, but not in a horrible way. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, a few friends, you know, would be at the back back garden, backyard, yeah, you know, and got it. <laughs> put the mats down, and we just put the gloves, and we didn't have a clue what we was doing. You know, it was just, um, you know, to us, boxing was Muhammad Ali. You know, that was, the fr you know, I remember the. Frazier fight and when it was on the TV and, uh, mm -hmm. and that, that sort of era, you know, and, um, mm -hmm. you know, so th th that's the sort of era I'm talking about. And as it went late in the 70s and early 80s, you know, the Sugar Ray Leathers, Marvin Eggers, and that was all our hero that was all our heroes. Right. But going through, the, going through the 70s, obviously putting Bruce Lee aside and training in, in I say martial arts because it, it's a general term, training mm -hmm. in that, um, we used to, we used to sort of walk for miles and miles and miles to all the news agents to buy every, any sort of magazine to do a, with martial arts or, of any kind, you know, whether it was a Bruce Lee magazine, whether it was a Black Belt magazine, Karate Illustrated, Official Karate, yeah. and all the spin-offs. And I've still got stacks and stacks of those somewhere yeah. in a box somewhere, you know. <laughs> but our two <laughs> idols were Bill Wallace and Benny Kides, uh -huh. you know, which eventually I, I, I was lucky enough to meet. You know, and um, yeah. and uh, he sort of met you. You know, and so we used to look up to those those two. Uh -huh. A good friend of mine, Jeff. You know, we we sort of got together. You know, so um, and that was our inspiration. You know, and um, you know, apart from Bruce, Bruce was always the main one anyway. Right, going to town every every week and buying magazines. And, so you know. what? So now, what? Um, do, do you know when JKD officially came to England? Do you have any idea? Um, right. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, JKD doesn't exist. Okay. Um, and, and it does exist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> this was what you warned me about, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's really awkward because you, you try and... I try not to sound like I'm trying to be Bruce Lee because I'm not, obviously. Um, but to me, Jeet Kune Do, what, it died when Bruce Lee died. Okay. You know, because Jeet Kune Do was Bruce Lee. Jeet Kune Do is a personal expression, isn't it? Yes. So, yes, it, JKD is in everyone. Right. And it's in no one as a, right. as a system. Do you know what I'm saying? And, that, and that's so yeah. true because when yeah. I'm teaching, right, I've, and I've always done this like I said to you a little while ago if I'm teaching an individual I'll look at and it's not trying to be Bruce Lee it, mm -hmm. I look at an individual and I think to myself is he tall is he short is he fat is he thin mm -hmm. is he aggressive is mm -hmm. he shy is it and you build upon that structure yeah. so it's like me saying to you right okay I'll write your name down Dwight yeah mm -hmm. then you write your name Dwight it's the same letters but it doesn't look the same right that's your expression, the way you write, your signature. Yeah. You know, or if I said to you, right, there's 26 letters of the alphabet, and I say to your brother or sister, there's 26 letters of the alphabet, and I say to another friend, I give three or four people the alphabet. I go, right, everyone go away, 
with those 26 letters and come back with a sentence. Mm -hmm. They're not going to come back with the same sentence. Right. But have used the same alphabet. Yeah. So they've yeah. picked out what they need that suits their sentence. That suits. So, okay. And I that see. is an analogy of how I teach. So right. I'll teach everyone the alphabet in as you know as a as a, a way of putting martial arts, if you like, you know. Yeah. And they will come back with the words that suits them and the sentence that suits them. Yeah. We well, see. So what you so what you've done then is you have you have completely dissolved the Jeet Kune Do into your aspect. Yeah. But that's what Bruce Lee's method was. It was to, right. it was to discard, use yeah. it and discard it, you know. Don't yeah. keep hold of it. Yeah. And okay. too many people, they go, I'm not being funny, when I mean, you look at, I'm not going to name anyone, because obviously there's a lot of, good, all good people, all good people. But yeah. so many people, you see them, I'm going to demonstrate Bruce Lee's sidekick. Now, Bruce Lee's back fists, you think, right. can I swear on you? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Because um, at the end of the day, there's only one person that done Bruce Lee psychic that was Bruce Lee. Yeah. Okay. So so this is this is very interesting because I mean you are regarded and I, I found out that you you that you don't appreciate the term Bruce Lee historian. So I'm uh, gonna refer to you as a Bruce Lee raconteur. No, I'm a Bruce Lee fan. <laughs> I'm a Bruce Lee no, fan. I, no, I'm sorry. A mere <laughs> fan, know. right? A mere fan <laughs> does not, right? A mere <laughs> fan does not produce. Now, a mere fan like me collects this stuff, but a mere no. fan does not produce this. And I don't even, I mean, th those are the only two things of yours that I own thus far. I well, plan to get, own. You're going to get a lot more because I'm going to send to you. Okay. <laughs> well, well, I, I, had, I plan to get a lot more. Actually, well, so, so you here. Send your, you send me your address and I'll send you some stuff. So. Okay. So here's what I do have. Um, here's what I research. And I know that there's much more than this. In 2008, uh, Bruce Lee, Legends of the Dragon, uh, yeah. Volume 1 and Volume 2. Those came out, mm. correct? Mm. <laughs> The Bruce Lee Chronicles, an inside look at Way of the Dragon is 2011. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I guess there was a, 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 a republishing of Legends of the Dragon in 2013. <laughs> well, basically, right? it, was a, it was a big fuck up. Excuse my French. <laughs> okay. Whatever it is. Okay. And then <laughs> um, there was something in 2014, uh, Bruce Lee Golden Movie News Annual. Yeah, and then the last thing I found uh, it was 2015. Uh, Bruce Lee Four C's Weekly. Yeah, right. And all of those are uh, are associated with your name. So this is what I find really interesting, right? Mm -hmm. That you that you spend so much time in the Bruce Lee world, but when I ask you about his art, you go, "Oh no, the art's gone." <laughs> Do you know what? It, it's, it's something that you can you can teach Bruce Lee's um, way of thinking. Mm -hmm. You can you can say, well, you know, Bruce Lee taught you to sort of to like we said, use what's useful and discard what's useless or whatever. Yeah, you yeah. can teach that, and you can put that. Um, a lot of that stuff came from a lot of the philosophers that Bruce Lee used to study, didn't it? Like you know, so you know, they, these are, they, they, a lot of these are age old doctors doctrines aren't they really when you yes, think about it yes for sure you know? for sure but what bruce lee was good at doing was taking those sort of philosophical doctrines and putting it into martial arts but you can right. take that same uh mindset and put it into music yes you know which has been done i mean if you look at because it's universal right that's what you're saying yeah, but if you if you look at anybody that thinks outside the box you know you know we could be talking about the Beatles, yeah, you know, um, that broke the rules of what they would normally do. You know, he wasn't, you know, he wouldn't normally do that in a recording studio. Mm -hmm. So they experimented, and boom, you know. Or it could be with sport, with sport, certain sportsmen. You know, yeah, um, it's the same. It's exactly the same thing. It's thinking outside the box, mm -hmm. and you can't. 
you can't say one, once again, it's going to sound like I'm trying to be Bruce Lee, I'm not, but you can't say one particular way of fighting is better than any other way of fighting because it's the person doing it. Right. You know, if you've got someone who, who's a natural fighter that's, you know, oh, I can teach him skill, you can teach him technique mm -hmm. and, and, and make him deadly, mm -hmm. you know, artistically deadly, if you like. <laughs> right. But you yeah. can't, if someone's not a fighter, listen, if you've got someone, if, you, if you've got a young person to teach them martial arts, if I was going to teach someone and I'll perfect their technique, you know, and they can look picture perfect, okay, but as soon as they get a punch in the face, they, 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 they're gone. Right, yeah. yeah. You know, and but some people get punched in the face and they get, they get worse. They, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and they get worse. And they get worse, you know, they get stronger when they get hit. Mm -hmm. Some people get weak when they get hit. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The best way is not to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah. the best weapon is your brain. Yeah. So, you know, if it looks a little bit, you know, difficult, you know, you just got to use your brain, don't you really? Because you can't think I'm going to face, I'm going to face that person. I'm going to try and, you know, he's naturally bigger than me. I'm not going to, I'm going to try and pit my strength against his strength. Right. Okay. Like one of the examples I always use to people that, that makes them laugh, I go, right, I stand, I get a big, a big, muscly student, I get in front, I go, okay, right, in front of the class, I go, right, okay, right. What is your interpretation of strength? What is strength? And they'll go, you know, lifting weights, blah, blah, blah. I go, hang on a minute, right, okay, I'm going to push you. I said, no, in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my hands on you like this, push against me, and they push against me. I go, no, push against me, and they're bigger than me, yeah? And they push me back. I go, a strength, isn't it? You know, but I, he had the strength over me. A strength. I couldn't, I couldn't push him. Yeah. Okay. Then I get one finger and I put it on his eye. I said, close your eye. Your eye. Put your finger on your eye. And I go right now. Push against me. And they, they ain't gonna push against because the eyeball. Right. So the point I'm trying to make is strength is where you put it. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you're, yeah. if someone is stronger than you, you've got to hit the vulnerable areas that, you know, yeah. and that's the way I teach them. If someone's taller, you know, you go for the body, or you're getting closer. If they're shorter, you keep your distance. Right. But at the same time, if you're tall and someone's shorter, you've got to learn how to, to, to fight inside as well. So you've got to mm -hmm. try and acquire some skill at that, but you will excel at your, what suits you better. You know, so it's, Am I making sense? I'm probably yeah. No, I I, I, bit, I, I I no, I get it. I get it. I'm I'm just fascinated by because to be honest, I wasn't expecting that um, answer when I asked you the the first Jeet Kune Do question. <laughs> I really wasn't right. So I'm love I'm loving this because now it's given me even more stuff to um to talk to. I have to tell you this. Um, mm -hmm. one of my online uh, Facebook colleagues, right has said that the Bruce Lee Foundation should just hire you, right? And uh, yeah, no, no. And, and, get it, and get it over and done with. And, and I, I noticed that um, on this one, the foreword is, is by Shannon Lee, correct? Mm -hmm. so, so are you working with or for the Bruce Lee Foundation these days? No, I've never worked directly for them. Okay. Um, I've always worked in contact with them. I've always been in touch with them, you know. So it's, it's. I, I try to sort of make sure that whatever I'm. Are you still there? Yeah. I th wait. Oh, hang sorry, on you, a second. Hang on a second. Something. Yeah. Um... So you mentioned Shannon there, and the screen automatically. <laughs> <laughs> That's the power of Bruce Lee. You say. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, all right, hang on one second. Internet. Okay, I think we're back. Okay, wait, hang on. All right, okay, I think we're back. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Okay, yeah, no, I mean, as soon as we mentioned the, the Lee family, all, all everything That's goes. <laughs> That's, That's the power of Bruce Lee, yeah. Yeah, um, okay, so you so but you have collaborated with them, correct? Well, listen, listen, uh, to me. You've got to respect them because I, I, yes, I get fed up with people slating them all the time. You know, oh, they should bring out this rare footage and this rare this and this rare that. Firstly, 
they haven't got to do anything. Right. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, if they want to do it, they'll do it. If they don't, they don't. They mm -hmm. can't be, you know, because some crazy fans want to go, we should have this and you should do this. No, you know, it don't work like that. Yeah. Well, you know, to be, fair, to be honest, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, you've got to stand back and you've got to look at it. Bruce Lee was a human being, you know, Shannon's a human being, real human beings. You're not, they're not some sort of, they're not there for everyone's beck and call. Right. That's and the that's thing about celebrity doing. though, you know, yeah, people, exactly. yeah, pe yeah. people end up thinking that, that they are owed because, because you're exactly. interested in the celebrity's life or the celebrity's exactly. product or whatever, you think you're owed something. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of uh, very loyal followers of Bruce Lee and, you know, and the Bruce Lee family and, and so forth. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they're human, they're human beings and they've got a life as well. It ain't all about pleasing the fans. It's about their living their life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, can't, you, know, it's, you can't blame the Bruce Lee estate or Shannon or whatever you want to call it because, you know, the fans ain't getting what they think they should be getting. You right. know, and, and to be honest with you, look, <laughs> You can't expect the family even to probably know as much as some of the fans know because it's no different to, uh, I watched something Paul McCartney, funny enough, and um, one of the questions, I said, oh, Paul, when did you recall yesterday? And he went, he said, I know man about the mid-60s. He said, you'll have to ask one of the fans, they know more than me. Yeah. Of course, it, look, if I said to you, right, when you were 10 years old, you went, you went on a holiday with your family, what happened on, on the way or, or on the holiday? You put, oh, I can't remember. You know, but if he was like a, a world famous celebrity, mm -hmm. they go, "Oh yeah, Dwight mm -hmm. on the fifteenth of June." Yep, he went. So, you know, they'd know, you know, like like Anrax like me. I'd know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Historians like me. no, sorry, mate. <laughs> but yeah. no, yeah. I'm saying. So you can't. But to them, it's not, you know, you can't. You have got to look at it realistically. Okay. Um, I don't know what to say. Really, I mean, yeah, so I, yeah, I do work with them. As far as if they if they contact me and say can you do this yeah I'll, I'll do it of course I would you right. know what I mean because I I'll do it because I, I love doing it to start with yes obviously so, you know, I, I respect them mm -hmm. obviously and you know we all idolise whether that's probably a word that Bruce Lee wouldn't have right we do idolise Bruce Lee mm -hmm. he's got he's got a lot to answer for that man you know what I'm saying yeah yeah and um, he's given us all a, a, a change in lifestyle listen up i'm no saint but i've never smoked i've never drunk um i've never took drugs i've never um and i'm say it all because of bruce lee but it, you gotta say that because i've lived my life since a young kid i've always trained yeah and i always train i train now probably just as hard as what i did when i was a kid yeah you no know, and i'm 56 now mm -hmm. and i think to myself well you know, people go, oh, what I'll get fed up with as well. The amount of people that come to the gym, and they'll go, say they bring the kids in, and I'll go to them, oh, blah, 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 I'm talking to them. And I say, I say, yeah, come and have it. Why don't you come and train? Oh, I'm past all that now. I'm 32. I'm 35. <laughs> you go, Are you for real? Yeah. Are you for real? You know, what? so you're just going to curl up and die in there, you know? Do, no, do, you no. think, do you think that that's because of the success of, like, the Karate Kid? I think the Karate Kid came along. And and imprinted on people's minds that it's a kid's activity. Do you think? Um, I don't really. You may be correct, but I, I, I don't mean really, because I'm a bit. Funny thing is, I'm not really a kung fu film fan. Okay. And that weird. I mean, for all the things that I, I love, I'm not. I'm, I like the old. What's that old school stuff? I like the old Shaw Brothers. I mean, the old pre Bruce Lee days. I love the Japanese cinema. I love the. The Chambura uh, yeah. Samurai epics, you know, I, I love all that, you know. Yeah. It was Bruce Lee again that got me turned on to that. Right, yeah. Hey, have you seen the new Netflix um, thing, um, Iron Fist and Kung Fu Kids? Yeah, well, I, I, I turned it off after about 20 minutes. Yeah, see, you, yeah, see you're, you're, more, you're a more harsh individual than I am. I sensed after about 20 minutes, this is crap. But I yeah. watched the whole thing. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> well, right. you know, yeah. I, I would, I would, I'd rather watch the Cardassians, and I, I don't watch that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, no, I, I mean, don't, when it first came on, I thought oh, it was great. Like, graphically, it was really good. You know, it came on a, 
the the uh, rotoscope type of titles, you know, like the Spaghetti Western, zoom, 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 you know, like done very well, you know. Yeah. But it kept cutting too fast between people's faces when they was talking, which got on my nerves a bit, to be honest with you. Okay. But then, I, well, I've got to be careful what I say here because there's people on there, I suppose, that I do know, but I didn't particularly like it, no. And I suppose I can't even judge because I didn't watch it all, but what I watched anyway, I thought, no, yeah. no, nothing. I didn't like it. No, but well, I'm, a, I'm I mean, a bit, yeah, a lot I'm of a bit a lot, this world side anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah, a lot of it, a lot of it was. Um, I, I mean, it 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 was derivative. I mean, and I found that it didn't necessarily cover any new ground that hasn't been covered no. before. You no. know, and when I see stuff like that, the question that I ask is, okay, so why was this necessary? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Right, I mean, a lot of padding, a lot of padding for no reason, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when they start having talking heads with, with people that you know, I don't know, that 25 years of age and they're talking about Bruce Lee like uh, they knew him, right, yeah. And I think, oh, really, you know, uh, yeah, that's all that's always Bruce Lee, that's talk always interesting, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean. I don't know. I mean, it's I, I not my cup of tea, no. no yeah. No, no. All right. So now tell me what what got you started. How do you prepare to become a Bruce Lee chronicler? Other than just watching <laughs> and reading everything that's been produced on him. How do you prepare for that? How, how does one become that? Well, when I, when I've, I've done quite a number of books now. I've done loads of magazines and I've lost count, I've lost count actually. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing I always do see when, when I was younger before pre-martial arts if you like okay. I, I used to love drawing you know, okay. I was, I've always been, been very artistically minded you know I've always I love designing things and I've just why I don't the only thing I can, my mum was a good drawer okay. um, my nan my grandmother mm -hmm. she worked for uh, L Street Fil Film Studios um, doing all the background no, like yeah. they the background, you know. Yeah. And she works on films like Jungle Book with Sabu and she works ah. on films with Jay Robinson and them so, sort of, that sort of era. So that's why you're a film snob. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. You've got but it in your blood, huh? Possibly, yeah. So yeah. I've always loved that sort of design and okay. you know, I'm my work my own worst critic, you know. Mm -hmm. Whatever anyone said bad about me, I've said worse about me. <laughs> but that's why I don't give a shit, you know. So <laughs> I think to myself, yeah, they're right, or no, they're wrong, right. you know, or whatever. Right. But yeah. so to me, the first thing I do when I do a, any sort of book or magazine, the first thing I do is design the cover. Ah, okay. Um, so, w what's the inspiration behind this cover then? I didn't design that cover. <laughs> <laughs> You, okay. The only one I didn't do. Now that was um, yeah. that was Colton Publishing, and what what that I tell you what happened with Colton Publishing. Um, they contacted me through the Bruce, the Bruce Lee estate, put them onto me. Okay. But they went to a, I think it was a um, like an expo in I think it was Las Vegas or somewhere, mm -hmm. and there were different stalls there, and there was what the Bruce Lee estate had a stall there. Okay. So. They approached the Bruce Lee estate. Oh, we're interested in maybe licensing to do a Bruce Lee biography. But what? But uh, the fellow at Colton told me, Roland uh, told me that they had a book on James Dean. I don't know what the book was, but it was a it was a sort of like a, a visual history of James Dean. Right, I see. I, see. Um, I keep meaning to ask them when I speak to them actually what it was. So I'd like to see it. But and they sort of put that same pitch to the Bruce Lee estate. You know, we could do a and the Bruce Lee estate agreed. Mm -hmm. They've done their they, they, they they deal with the licensing, wherever it comes mm -hmm. to, I don't mm -hmm. know. And then they said, okay, uh, can you suggest anyone who could write it? And they used a fellow called Paul Bowman for their previous book, who's a lecturer, I think it's Cardiff University. I don't know Paul Bowman. Um, he did the first one. But I think they wanted a different direction. Someone was more of a... I don't think Paul um, was such a Bruce Lee fan. He was just more of an... Um, oh, I get it. A scholarly type of yeah. a, you know, college lecturer, very, very an academic, clear, you yeah. know. Um, but he wasn't necessarily a, a Bruce Lee anorak like me, you know. 
So, well, he definitely wasn't. Yeah. So, the Borussia estate suggested me, right? Now, that could have been out of kindness, or it could have been just to get rid of him. <laughs> right? Right? So, yeah. so uh, they, 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 they got in touch anyway, and um, it went backwards and forwards for quite a while because the contract that they originally I had to sign, I was literally liable for everything, you know. You know, almost to the point where if someone tripped over one of the books at a bookstore, I'll get sued. You know what I mean? It was, <laughs> well, not that day, but it was, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was, not anything, it's a business, you know. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it went back to, and I, I ordered what I wanted, what I didn't want, went back to and forwards, and I've got a fixed fee for it. And um, I had to write between 15 and 20,000 words. So I proceeded to do that. Yeah. Uh, and a good friend of mine, you know Greg Rhodes? Uh, Greg Rhodes? He, he, he's a, a big Bruce Lee uh, fan, anorak, historian, whatever you call it, same as himself. Um, the, the name's familiar, yeah, but I can't Yeah, he's been around a long time. Okay. But he's a good friend of mine, Greg. Now, Greg, okay. um, he sort of helped me a bit as well. He, he helped with some of the words and you know, some of the, the introduction stuff and whatever else. So, you know. mm -hmm. and, but Because what happened at the time was the contract got signed. Now I had, I think it was about three months to do it. Okay. My dad goes and dies. You know, my dad passed away uh, around about the time, just as I started working on it. Oh, wow. So you can imagine, you know, it all, everything was up in the air. I lost yeah. my dad. Wow. And, um, but, you know, I still got it done anyway. So we sort of carried on and carried on and carried on. Greg, so Greg was help. That's when Greg come and helped me, you know, and, um, so we we we, we got it, was it done. Tough, so huh? I got the yeah, it was very tough, very very tough. Yeah. So when the book come out, the twenty thousand words went down to about I forget about two thousand or something. Because Colton had got in touch and they said we've submitted it to the Bruce Lee estate and they've rejected it. And I'm thinking, shit, what have I done something wrong? Have I done something wrong? Because yeah, because it's Bruce Lee's. Life. I've never done a biography, you know, the whole biography before. Right. And you know, I've yeah. always done timelines and specialised in certain areas and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know which I'll get into that in a minute if, if you if you've got time. But the, the the biography side of things, you know, is to do a to do a true Bruce Lee bi a biography, it'd probably take ten volumes. Right. You couldn't do it in one volume, you know, it's okay. just uh, yeah. Um, but then, yeah, then yeah something's volumes, gonna get left out, huh? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So you go to the main parts of someone's life, you know. Yeah. And um, we did that, and we done a good job. We did do a very, very, very good job, and we was gutted that it'd been cut down. And so I'm thinking to myself, was it because of the death section? You know, that the, you know, did I mention Betty Ting Pei in the wrong light? Because I didn't, I didn't mention anything controversial, right. you know, because I'm not interested in that anyway. And right, most of yeah. it anyway. Yeah. Um, so I just thought to myself, well, I don't know what I've done here. I don't know. And Colton didn't know either. Well, that's what they told me at first. And um, anyway, it transpired later on that what it was, when they had done the initial deal, it was for a Bruce Lee visual history, not a Bruce Lee biography. Okay. Right, so when the Bruce Lee estate have seen the, the, the draft, of course, you know, what they, they call it, they've obviously looked at it, because Chris thought he was actually not with the estate anymore. When Chris thought he was at the estate, I had a good conversation with him. I said, Chris, what, did I write, was there something, did I do something wrong? He said, no, 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 it was, it was brilliant. It was really, really good. He said, but they didn't license for a biography, they licensed for a visual history. Huh, interesting. So we, we said, look, no, we're not having this. You know, you, you've not, you know, you've not paid us for a biography, you've paid us for a visual history. So basically, it was his life in pictures, and then they extracted the bits that we wrote to go in the sections right so there's a lot missing yeah so now did you supply who supplied the pictures for for it um i supplied quite a lot okay um but the majority of it came from no i think it's quite a lot really but the majority of it came from the bruce Lee estate because okay. colton had gone there they actually asked me to go with them to the estate to, uh -huh. and but at the time um I was about to travel to Thailand. Okay. And it had been a case, I can't think it was 
I can't it was before or after, but it was like it was like a two week space of going for, and I thought I can't be asked. You know, I'm, I'm traveling all the way to Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. Then I come back, I've got to travel all the way to LA. I thought, you know, and I've got to run a business. I've got my gym. It was just too much, you know. And mm -hmm. as I said, like, you know, it was everything happened at once anyway, that particular right. time. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I, I said to Colton, I said, listen, I said, um, you know, I won't go. I said, but if you just choose what you're going to choose and uh, bring it back. So it's probably a mistake. I should have gone there because I could have probably then, I could have handpicked stuff better than what, say, Colton could have done because I know what I was right. looking at. Yeah, exactly. And um would have been nice. Yeah. But you know, I'm not I'm not out to grab it back. No, it's just to me, it's just a whatever works, you know. Yeah. And they got enough material anyway. They came back and I used the material at all, but I did use some of the stuff I'd already had as well, odds and sods. Right. Not but mate, it's mainly the stuff that Colton got, yeah, for that. So okay. it basically it's I wrote the book, mm -hmm. um, I compiled the book as far as because what they did as well, what they did wrong as well, uh, Colin, they, they, they sent the proof back to me at first, full of palaver with the estate, sent the proof back to me. And I thought, what the fuck? And the dragon, that's Fist of Fury. They, they mixed it all up. They oh, did, man. They're, obviously, there are people at their offices, they don't, you can't blame them, they don't know. You know yeah, but, why, are, but why, why do they get themselves involved if they don't know? I don't know. So I ended up adding that to a, the list of jobs that I've done for them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, I didn't get nothing, no more extra dollar out of it. But right, to me, yeah, yeah. I put my claims in the front. My mm -hmm. only condition was okay that I want my name on that cover because they said at first I would have to clear that with the Bruce Lee estate. I said, Well, if my name's not going to go on the cover, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not a, some ghost rider, right? Uh, writer, writer. <laughs> no, <laughs> that was good. That was good. Right. So, I'm not gonna, you know, it's got so, and that's one of the things I insisted in anyway. I won the day with that one, and uh, but the Bruce Lee estate, they, they, because I spoke to Chris Hart, he said, Look, of course, of course, your name's on the cover, you're doing the book, but it was Colton being a little bit over, 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 uh, I don't know what's the word, you know, a bit worried about the estate refusing it, which they wasn't gonna refuse anyway, you know, they was pleased with my name to be on the book, they're happy with that, so right, there was no, there was no issue there. So that book came about that they designed the cover. Uh, I think it was a second or third cover. I think they'd been rejected. Some of the other designs had given to the estate at first. And eventually Shannon, it was Shannon that chose that photograph for the cover. Okay. But that, every other book I've done is different. This it's did you get a copy of Mandarin Superstar? Uh no, I don't have it yet. I, 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 it, I, well, it's sold out. I've, I've got no, it's not, we only done a limited run of two hundred and uh, uh. You know, we, we, we're trying to produce it soon as a softback. Right. Um, but at the moment, I'm working on Intercepting Fist, which is the follow-up, which is the Fist of Fury timeline. Jeez. Okay. All right. So but, that, all right. Here, but here's we're, we're I've got right as well. Sorry. I've got to mention Darren Chua. Darren Chua. Uh, a good I've friend seen of mine. his name. Yes. Darren, Darren is uh, a true Bruce Lee expert, you know. But the good thing with Darren is where he's working from, that side of the world, yeah, he has access to a lot of the Chinese archive of yeah. newspapers, magazines, and but he can read Chinese, he can translate Chinese. So you know, and the same as what we've done with the Mandarin Superstar, we've got a lot of material that was never ever really published, or was never published before, other than when it was initially came in a newspaper or a small magazine back in the day. I've probably never wow. seen the light of day since. Really? Um, then I went to Thailand and I. I I totally, totally, the amount of work I did in Thailand, you know, to, to where the big boss was filmed, interviewing people out there, studying the, the land, the, where everything was filmed. I've been there a few times before, before anyway, because I've been going to Thailand, say, for the last couple of decades, so right, yeah. I knew the place, I knew Pak Chong fairly well anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but we went to Pak Chong, and we met with a film star out there called um, Sarapong Chartree. Now, Serapong Chartree, he's probably the biggest name in Thailand as far as film stars go. Okay. He'd be, he'd be like your, your Brad Pitt of Thailand, you know. Okay. Although okay. now he's in his 70s. Yeah. Um, but he's been in the star since the 70s. Um, big, big name. Everyone knows Serapong Chartree. Mm -hmm. But we met him. We, he's got a temple that he, he's got, a big temp, beautiful temples that he's built. And we went there and we, anyway, we got to meet him. And 
I think um, we, we got on quite well because everyone at the temple was they're all tight. I was probably the only Westerner there. Mm-hmm. So straight away, I stuck out like a sore thumb. <laughs> and uh, he could speak English. He started talking to me. My wife's, my wife's Thai, by the way. My wife's yeah. Thai, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Nguyen. Like, sorry? Uh, Nguyen, is that? Nguyen, that's it, yeah. Nguyen, yeah. that's okay. it. Yeah. 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 So, she, to her, it was like, uh, she can bleed, like, a Sarah Pong, you know, she's like, it's not starstruck, but you can imagine, can't you? You know, it's like, yeah. a, she's a little baby. She's, that's been a big name, isn't it, you know? So now we're standing there talking to this fella, really nice bloke, and he said, "Come back in about an hour, so I'll be, I'll be a bit, I'll be a bit, uh, hopefully a bit quiet." He said, "I'll take, take something to eat," and we went back there, and it's still crowds and crowds of people around him. He, he sort of winked at me, "Come on!" And he ran through the crowd. He's like seventy-four years of age. He ran like um, Mo Farrow, you know, wasn't, that was his name, was the runner, but he was fast anyway. Okay. Uh, we sort of tried to keep up, keep up with him, and he took us to his little restaurant on his grounds, and he. Give us DNA, and anyway, I've got to sort of have a good chat with him. And I said, Okay, I said, um, I'm doing this book on Bruce Lee. I said, um, Oh, yeah, I said, um, Right, trying to find out the names of all these Thai stuntmen. I said, Because you've got all these pictures of Bruce Lee and Pat Chong and Bangkok and whatever, and there's all these a lot of the people in the film in the big bars, they're all mm-hmm. they're Thai. You've mm-hmm. got the Chinese crew, you've got right. the Thai, yeah, but no one has ever found out who they are, what they're anything, and it's never been done before. Yeah. So what I did, I actually, before I went to Thailand, because I, I know I can do a lot of research, on my iPhone at the time, I just took loads of photographs on there of all the pictures of Bruce Stan, all, all, the, all the stunt guys and, and whatever. Right. So I started showing him these photographs and he's going, so like one photograph I had like eight people and he's going, yeah, that's so and so, I know him, I know him. And he knew all of them. Wow. He knew all of them, right? I'm oh like, my God. Okay, okay, write the right name, write the name, say, write the name, you know, so we write all his names down, you know. I said, Where are they? He said, Oh, well, he's dead. Uh, <laughs> he's dead. Uh, yeah, he's dead. Uh, yeah, he's dead. Oh, fucking dead. Yeah. All right. But then he went, he went, but a good friend of mine, he always says about, he remembers working with Bruce Lee on the film. I went, Really? He said, Yeah, he said, What I do is so I'll give him a call. He said, uh, Give me your wife, give her a, 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 a Thai phone, you know, give her a number. So I'll give you a call in a few days' time if I get hold of him, you know. So by that time, we've gone back to Bangkok and we're in the hotel in Bangkok. My wife's phone rings. She's blah, 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 Thai. It turns out it's this Thai stuntman, right? His name's P. P. Bao or P. Bao Borabak. Borabak. Okay. He is also a well known face. So if you're walking down the street with him, everyone knows him. Right. So he drove, four, was it four, three or four hours to meet us in Bangkok? Wow. All right. Sweet. And then he spent, he come to our room and we spent two or three hours chatting. He couldn't speak English, so it was like through my wife, you know? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I've got the camera set up and I interviewed him and I've got him on camera now, about an hour or so interview, yeah. talking about everything, right? Bruce yeah. Lee, you know? yeah. And Sadly, he passed away a few, a few weeks ago. Um, so we, we've lost him. I was quite yeah. quite sad, upset about that. Yeah, well, that's, that's, one, that's one of the tough things about mm-hmm. this, this art that we are so dedicated to that, you know, a lot of the pioneers, a lot of the, the, oh, yeah. er, the old timers are just not with us anymore, you know? And, th- and that's the whole point of what we're trying to do. We're trying to uh, get these these people to, you know, to give us their recollections, anecdotes, memories before it's too late. Because once they're gone, yeah, nothing worse than listening to a story second, third, fourth hand, you know. And um, yeah, don't get me wrong, I've met quite a few people over the years that knew Bruce Lee and did certain things with Bruce Lee. And some of the things they tell me, I know that they're wrong, but not purposely they're telling me wrong. It's just mm-hmm. memory fades. Right, yeah, mm-hmm. okay. I get it. You know, they get the year wrong or they get the film wrong or... Right. You know, that's just human, humans, you know what I mean? So you can't... Mm-hmm. So going back to uh, P. Bell, um, you know, the stories, you know, he used to meet Bruce in the morning and they'd go jogging together up to the ice factory and loads of stories. You know, and um, that helped massively with the section on the book, the Man Superstar book, sorry, you know, on the Pak Chong and Bangkok, you know. And, yeah. 
because yeah. he was there at Pharrell. And um, he also worked with Wang Yu as well. And he worked with uh, a few of the Hong Kong stars that went to there and made films afterwards. Right. That's true, uh, yeah. Because yeah. they, what, what was the name of that? It was Wang Yu and, and Lo Lee that did uh, a Thai boxing film, right? Yeah, there was, oh, what was the name of it? Um, yeah. Christ. It was a couple of, you had Skyhawk, that was a bit late, wasn't it? It was Skyhawk, that was filmed in part in time. You had the tournament. Okay. And there was another one with the Wang, Wang Yu one. What was that bloody called? But he yeah. said Wang Yu was a horrible person. He said he was horrible. <laughs> he kept saying, he kept saying in sort of like broken English, Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee, good heart. Good yeah. Heart. Wang Yu, no good, no good. <laughs> and he went, he went, uh, John Claude, John Claude Van Damme. He went, no good, no good. <laughs> All right? Dolph Lundgren, Dolph Lundgren. No, no good. Uh, only one good heart. Wow, wow! That's he was incredible. such a, a good-hearted person. He, he was yeah. just so, you know, one of the boys. You know, he yeah. never. Well, the other ones are all like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a film star, you know. Steve, do you think that's because you're definitely the guy to ask this, right? Mm. What is it about Bruce Lee that keeps people coming back for more? I mean, we're 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 on what now? Forty-six years since mm. he passed away. What is it that keeps this high level of interest in him? What keeps it, what drives that, do you think? Um, do you know what, I, I, remember, I keep mentioning the Beatles, but it was an interview with the Beatles and someone said to the Beatles, you know, why are you so successful? I said, I wish, John Lennon said, I wish we knew I was, if we, if we knew we'd become record producers. <laughs> <laughs> and make you know like rather than just a, be a band you know uh, <laughs> now that's who knows it's, a, it's I don't know I mean, you, you could look at some people say it's his martial arts skill some will say it's his good looks some will say it's his, his uh, unique um, uniqueness you know yeah. at that at the time there's no one else around like that at the time you know yeah I don't know I mean everyone's got their own Everyone's got their own Jeet Kune Do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I mean, I, I think, I think, I think it, I, you, you're on to some, you know, you know, they say, um, they say it's like, it's like when you, when you fall in love, right? Like you, you, like you know it, right? You feel it and you, and you know it. So I think that, yeah, I think you're on to something with Bruce Lee. It's like, you're either into him or you're not. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, it, and and for different people, um, it's exactly. a lot of different reasons, yeah. I think so. I think yeah. so. And I think it's, it's hard to say. I mean, to me, it's the whole, the whole charisma, isn't it? It's the whole charisma for me. It's, mm -hmm. and I, I think it's changed over the years. When you first when you first come across Bruce Lee, you know, I'm, I'm going back to myself. I can't speak to myself. Okay. It's, it's, it, I, I didn't get into Bruce Lee because of his philosophy. Or for his clever words, when you were younger. Bruce Lee, the way he looked, right? The excitement, you know, that wow, yeah. you know, look at that. Because that's all you see. You only see when something comes towards you, the first thing you see is the image mm -hmm. of it coming towards you. You know, then you get to know what you learn after. So, as, as time's gone on, I think Bruce Lee, I can't put it in words, it's like, um, so you've got that, that one dimension, if you like, of the image, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you keep sort of studying that, and you're really sort of fascinated with that, and you try and emulate that, and everything else. Everyone tries to be like Bruce Lee, yeah. And then suddenly, you realise it's something behind the image. It's not just a, it's not just a uh, exterior thing. Then you realise there's more to him than that, you know. And right. and how clever he was, really. For, I mean, you got to remember as well, someone that was sort of like in their twenties and early thirties when he died. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. age, is it? It's not. You know, it's like, uh, it's a, I'm 56 and bloody hell, he's like, you know, he's 32, he's 32, he's 32, I think. He still seems older than me. Right, yeah. Hey, is that why, um, is that why, um, that, is that why you chose the, um, the website brucelyforever.com? No, I didn't know him a while ago. It was me and David Tedman. Okay. Uh, going back, we had, a, we was doing Bruce Lee from poster magazines. Mm -hmm. We did a first, the first ever one. We did it with Shannon Lee's interview in it. And it just sort of went from there. And I, I had the web address name years ago. I just sort of always kept it. I never really used it. And um, I've had a bit of sort of a 
sort of a bit of a bad experience trying to get some of these books distributed. You know, they're, they're difficult to, you know, unless you've got a big mainstream publisher like your Colton. I mean, Colton, are, are, they're showing interest in what I'm doing. Yeah, okay. But it's not, Bruce Lee isn't the big seller like some things can be, you know, and unfortunately, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, these days. Really? Like, I mean, it's, it's mainstream as far as people, you, you know, if you see a, a movie, you may get, the big star of, of today go uh -huh. do, a, do a punch and kick and go say something along the lines of who do you think you are bruce lee you know yeah. that, that name's always there yeah but what and, i'm saying is if, you, if you've got a bookstore or something right do you, you know, guys have the, do you guys have these um over in the uk this yeah, stuff so i haven't got those i haven't got those but you can order those yeah they're actually all um endorsed by the bruce lee estate i believe i think so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you, you, you are, I'll, I'll tell you something. The only reason I bought them is because it says official collector's edition. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing in them that's new. You know what I I'll mean? Have, right? I'll have to but use it, that on my next one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to use that. <laughs> yeah. But it says official collector's edition. I'm like, I'm buying it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, is it possible? Is it possible for somebody like you to have a, a favorite Bruce Lee book or a favorite Bruce Lee movie? Oh, uh, it's difficult. I mean, I suppose because of recent uh, recent events, you know, meeting Pete Bow and people like you know, and, and because of my deep association with Thailand anyway, uh -huh. the big boss, I suppose, has got a lot. Of, I mean, standing, I know quite a few people been there now, but. When I first went to Pak Chong um, years ago, and when I went to the the, the boss's house, you know the the, the, yeah. the temple. Yeah. Weird. It's like you're standing there, and it's like you're on the film set. It's really, really weird. It's like, uh -huh. all right, things are a bit worn out now. And the grass ain't so green, and right. there's no water in the pot in the pool, in the pond, you know, and right. you know, the trees are missing that's in the movie, but. Yeah everything else is intact and you're standing there and you're, it's like being in a 3D, 4D movie or something like, like this, you know, you think, oh, this is weird, you know. Mm -hmm. So, Big Boss sort of holds, I suppose, at the moment, I'll go through sort of like Fits and Stars with really, it. I mean, at the moment, I'm concentrating heavily on the Fist of Fury because that's the book I'm doing. Right, yeah, Fury, I get it, yeah. You know, yeah. And, um, but that, once again, um, Mandarin Superstar, the big boss book, if you like, isn't a big boss book. It's just that it encompasses that yeah. timeline. Right, I guess. It, it starts at 69, goes all through, you know, the Milo tour and the, 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 the silent flute mm -hmm. business that went on and then all the long street and it goes through all that, you know, and it, it'll go right to the premiere of Big Boss. Right. The idea, oh. the idea of the Mandarin Superstar was, uh, wasn't a, to show Bruce Lee as a, you know, it didn't start off, the book didn't start off with, oh, and Bruce Lee arrived in Thailand to make the big boss because you and I could follow that because you're a Bruce Lee fan. Right, yeah. But the general, per, you, know, you know, the average Joe on the street or the general public would look at it and go, what the fuck's he in Thailand for? I thought mm -hmm. he was Chinese. Or they wouldn't understand that, you know. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, that's not the idea of the book. The idea of the book, it opens up. And the first thing you see in the book is my definite chief aim. Wow, really? Right. And there's a couple of different versions of that in there. Okay. And so it starts off, it, what the book is, it shows Bruce Lee's struggle to try and break through to mainstream uh, movies or whatever, you know? Right. Yeah. And he couldn't, because he was Asian, obviously. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of obstacles to, to, to overcome, overcome. Mm -hmm. and you can see at the time, you know, uh, things were changing. You know, there was a bit more interest in China with Nixon as it went on 71, 72. But prior to that, you know, they had like the black, black exploitation movies. And I yeah. think Bruce Lee said, didn't he? You know, now it's the time maybe for the Chinese, you know, and <laughs> you can see there's a turn, there's a in trend, you know, and um. That's a funny thing as well. When 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 uh, King Boxer was one of the first kung fu films to be released in the UK, yeah. by Things of Death in, in the US, yeah, yeah. Warner's brought it out in, in the UK the same time as they did in the in the states. 
but they double build it in the UK with um, a black black exploitation movie. What's the name of it? That done very 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 well the previous year. Who, it wasn't Shaft. Who, who, who was the star? Oh shit! Oh, what's the name of it? I'll have to look it up. Well, I should yeah. know because I wrote a big chapter on it. <laughs> mine, see, but, I mean, there, there was there was Jim Kelly. There was there was Ron Van Cleef. There was nah, before um, all that. Before all that. Um, before all that? If you bear me a second, I will try and find it for you, find a name for you. I, I've just got to find the book. I wrote, a, I wrote a book or a magazine book, stroke book, uh -huh. Everybody Was Kung Fu Fighting, which hasn't been released yet, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, but that's, um, it's about how, what we were talking about earlier, the Kung Fu um, movie uh, craze started in the UK, really. Um, okay. I'm just trying to, if I can find the, Folder, I'll open it and I might be able to find what it was. Sorry, sorry about that. No, 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 that's fine. Because I hey, also opened it up on, on the program. Do you think you would ever write a biography? Um, like I said earlier, I don't think to do it justice, I don't think you could do it in one volume. Right, yeah. Um, I suppose if you want to make money, yeah, you could, you could a biography is the way to go. Uh, because it sell. I mean, if you go to a bookstore, the trouble with what I do is very niche. Yeah. You know, that's why when I said I, about the Man and Superstar, it was more about Bruce Lee's struggle to 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 um, to make it. Right. You know, yeah. it wasn't about the big boss. Yeah. It just showed how he eventually did make it. You know, and um, mm -hmm. through all the struggle, you know, I'm just trying to find. Let me a second, I'll still find a name is film. Uh, it was called. And then I want to ask you a question about, about the Fist of Fury thing. Yep. Superfly. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, Superfly. See, I would, yeah, I was I was thinking I was thinking about about you know the, the martial art black exploitation stuff. Oh right, yeah. yeah no, this know. is prior to that. And the what they did, they they, they double build it with Superfly because yeah. I thought, well, that's, uh, that's uh, uh, Curtis, Curtis Mayfield, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, Curtis, wait, I don't remember who the actor was, but Curtis Mayfield did the music. I'm yeah, sure. yeah, right, yeah. But it's it, because it was a good because it was a big hit. They yeah. they coupled that with King Boxer. They thought, well, at least they'll get some audience there. If, uh -huh, uh -huh. But as it turned out, King Boxer took off, and then the Bruce Lee films and blah blah blah. Anyway, right, yeah. So yeah. So, the, the, sorry, I'll keep, I'll keep yabbering on. Then no, I'll... no, that, that's it. So, so I, I had seen it before, and then for some reason it showed up. Um, I came across it again. Like, when I started doing the research to talk to you, have you seen on the YouTube, it's a, it's a, 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 a British guy named Rob Ager, and he does an analysis of the Fist of Fury fight scene the dojo fight scene have you seen that no i'll send it to you okay yeah i'll send it to you i mean it, look i don't know anything about about making movies and what have you but from what he says it is a massful because he takes you virtually behind the scenes and he says look at how bruce lee holds his body look at how he does this and here's the psychological reason behind that. And notice that Bruce Lee pays attention to this and this thing. And I'm like, really? It's amazing. Mm. It's amazing. I don't, know, I, don't know, I don't know. I've never seen it. I mean, okay. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you because I, 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 I'm, I wonder if you could get, if you would get something out of it. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I've studied the, obviously, where I'm writing the book, I've studied the, you know the what went on before but what we've mm -hmm. done in this particular book me and darren we've we've gone through the history you'd be surprised how much history research went into fist of fury before it was made right um and we we've covered everything from sections on the sikh guards that are in shanghai at the time mm -hmm. which all true it's all true mm -hmm. no, no dogs are chinese signs there's all mm -hmm. history behind that mm -hmm. we've the history of the ching Wu school yeah um, we've got the history of the Japanese that had the school, the Hong Q school yeah. in Shanghai. It all—it was all true, right? 
Um, obviously, the, the character of Chen Zhen was was a fictional, but it was still it was still based upon several names that were similar to that, mm -hmm. which was were top students of Fog Yun Gap or Ho Yun Chao, whichever way you want to pronounce it. So we've gone right into depth with that. Um, we've, we've also gone into wow. depth with um, you know post Fist of Fury, where um, his next movie was going to be the Green Bamboo Warrior. Um, We've got script notes on that in the book. Mm -hmm. um, we've got there's, there's a lot of good information in there, you know. And okay. then we've gone into the, we've gone in, prior to that we've got we've gone through some of the warrior scripts. We've right. gone into the kung fu the kung fu TV series uh, business that went on there. Loads of loads of sort of uh, interesting information about okay. that. Right. I'm trying to so, say too much as all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So all right. So so that, okay. So so here's all right. So I own this and I own this. Yeah. What am I missing that is what or, or or anybody who doesn't even have any of your stuff? Where can they go to get your stuff? Well, next it should have been this week. Um it should have opened this week, but my website, Bruce Lee Forever dot com. Okay, okay. Um I did try the Amazon store for a while. Um absolute pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, they still owe me about five and a half hundred pounds from about three months ago, which they just keep refusing to pay me because it's got to go to appeal because I was late posting a, a magazine off and it, I got suspended and all bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, everyone it, got what they ordered. Everyone yeah. got what they ordered. Yeah. There's no complaints. Um, Amazon took their share of it and they're holding the remainder in their bank account. Mm -hmm. And I was on the phone yesterday for an hour and a half to Amazon. Yeah, I might as well have been talking to this brick wall next to me, you know. Yeah, yeah. you know. So that's another story. So I've got this website because of that. I've decided to, you know, I've got a web designer, a very very good web designer who's putting it together for me. Okay. In fact, in here this evening, we was going through the last couple just before I started speaking to yourself. Okay. About two hours with him over. It's quite cool. complicated because he's showing me the the back end of it. You know, how this work, how you had things and whatever. So I'm sort of I'm I'm trying to make sure I've got that in my head. But he's working. He's working on all the e-commerce part of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, got, look, the the thing is, right. a lot of people are not aware of how much work goes into doing even the yeah. simplest things online. Yeah. You know, yeah. they have they have no idea. They think, oh yeah, you write a book and you put it up on Amazon and everything. You know, yeah. it, it's no. Cool. no, 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 no. Doesn't and, work. And it's, just, it's the same. It's the same with writing books and make, doing magazines. And mm -hmm. some of the, I mean. It's like it doesn't bother me too much, but some of the idiots that have criticised me over stupid things. Oh, you should have done this. Why don't you do it? Okay, you go and do a book then. No, but you know, yeah, you see that that's the thing, right? That's the thing. There's um, there's so many people out there ready to criticise. Yeah. And all you got to say to them is, well, where's your what, what is your product? Mm. You know, what have you put out? If you know yeah. so much, how come you've yeah. never? Done Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? I just, you know, yeah. But do you know what? You, it's you could be, you could be the most, you could be Mick Jagger. If someone's going to criticize you over something. You could yeah. be anyone, you know. You could be, yeah. you know, let alone some little, little, well, see, person like myself. You know what I'm saying? So it's, see, it's nothing now, on the scale of things. If they would do this before anything, if they would do this, if before they pray, they would believe. If before they speak, they would listen, before they spend, they would earn, before yeah. they write, they would think, before they quit, they would try, and before they died, they would live, they would get it right. They would get it right, you see? Okay, but break that last one down for me. Before you die, live. What's your idea of living? Uh, well, I, I mean, you got the the Bruce Lee one again. You know, like it's not the it's not the it's a journey, not a destination type of thing. You know, so mm -hmm. and that's what it is, isn't it? Really, it's the, you know, if I think really the amount of sort of money I probably spent going to say Thailand, I could have probably bought a house. Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah. what's the point in being the richest man in the graveyard? Right. 
So what, I'm not rich, but what I'm trying to say to you is, you've got to live your life, haven't you? Yeah. You've got to be sensible. Obviously, you've got bills to pay. You've got, you got, you know, you've got family to look after, and you've got responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you have to think, well, do you know what? You know, I'm going to do these things because you're a long time dead. Yeah. You're a long time dead. So just go and enjoy yourself, you know, and, and do the things, you know, see places, meet people. Right. You know, and do the things you want to do. Right. Don't let people put you down. Don't let people dictate what you can or what you can't do. I'm not talking about legally. I mean, you know, as a, life, as a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to sit there all day long and listen to music, you sit there, that's what you love doing. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to go and, if you want to jog every morning, go jogging. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that, for me, I mean, to me, I train a lot, you know, and I probably overtrain. <laughs> probably do, you know, I probably do. Yeah. I was doing, I mean, I, I'm just recently getting over a calf injury. But I'm doing, not at the moment, but I've been doing like 15 to 20 miles a week running. Okay. Uh, Every week. Wow. And 56. <laughs> 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 Which it was 54. <laughs> but, you know, so, it, listen, it's, age is just a number. Mm -hmm. You know, no, I mean, right. you, can, yeah. you, you can't, you know, obviously, you, you know you're not 21 anymore, but do you know what? To me, you just got to just live your life. Okay. All right. You got to so live listen. your life. Okay. Yeah. All right. Look, it's eleven. What? It's twelve thirty where you are. Yeah, that's all right. I'm a vampire. You, yeah, but yeah, but you probably got to get up and train again <laughs> tomorrow, don't you? Yeah, I'm all right. I, I actually, actually, tomorrow I'm not training. I'm quite looking forward to it tomorrow. Actually. Okay. Funny enough, <laughs> no, so I'm teaching tomorrow, but I'm I'm okay. I'm, if you're okay, I'm okay. I'm, I'm fine. I'm, yeah. No, I, it, I mean, it, this is, I, I got, I, I, I've taken up enough of your time and I, I apologize for the whole technological. No, mishap, listen, this, man. Is, this is great. This is, I can hear you good. I can see you clear. This is great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. You know, it's just the, the people love to see the interaction between us live. You know, that's, that's the right. only part that, um, yeah. that I feel, I feel bad about. But um, so, so the Bruce Lee forever dot com. That yep. should be up and running in a few weeks, you think, huh? Possibly in the next week. That's what I'm looking at. And, okay. as long and as that, would be, that would be the best place for people to, to reach out to you, to get in touch with you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've got some back, back uh, stock that we're, we're going to put on there. Okay. Which we'll probably be selling, you know, in quite good, quite good set, you know, sale prices. Sweet. Um, we're putting some pre-order stuff and some coming soon stuff on there as well. Okay. Um, but I mean, like the book I'm working on at the moment, that's probably going to be six, six months away. Yeah. Hey, man. Uh, but it, I, can't, I can't rush it. It's got to be done when yeah, it's done. No, now. right. You're right. No, um, you take your time and, and do it right. And, and the thing is as well, you know, putting all this aside, you know, I've got to go off and earn, earn a living as well. So it's, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not just writing books, you know, it's, it's, it's a passion. Yes. You know, and a passion with a bit of pocket money. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. And, no, and which is normally spent on Bruce Lee anyway. I, so. <laughs> I won't I will I won't show you yeah. I will I won't show you the uh, the three new t shirts that I got. They even had one they had a, a this new sweatshirt. They didn't have it in my size. So I bought it in the size over mine because yeah. I had to have it. <laughs> that's a that's a fan. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh, anyhow, listen, man, it's been wonderful talking with you. I think what you're doing is an indispensable part of the, the G Kondo life. You know, Thank um, you. I, I, I really, really, what, the stuff that I've seen, I've really enjoyed and I look forward to seeing a lot more of it. And I look forward to talking to you again, you know, so in. Yeah, I'm, with, I'll, I'll, always, I'll always have a chat whenever you're free. And, yeah, um, man, when, when stuff is up and running, you know, we can do yeah. this again. We'll keep in touch anyway now and um, send me your address and I'll send you some, some stuff. I really appreciate that. That's very nice of you. Don't forget that. Just send me your only message and I'll, uh, I'll put some stuff in the post this week coming. Okay. All right, man. All right. All right. Well, listen, have a good evening and uh, enjoy too. class tomorrow. All right. You take care. Thank you. Thanks right. for, for inviting me. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. This Thank has you. been absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Lovely. All right. Thank take you. care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye-bye. Okay.
That was it. Uh, episode number 102 of the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues with uh, Steve Carriage. Um, you guys uh, remember he said uh, BruceLeeForever.com is the place to go maybe in about a week, a week and a half or so, and, uh, and see uh, what, what's offered there. That's it for today. Feel free, share, like, comment, ask me questions if you want. I'll review everything I have to post in. Uh, sign up for notifications so when we go live here on Facebook, uh, if we ever get that um, other system to work, uh, but also uh, sign up for at the YouTube channel for the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues, for the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast, and for the FMA files, which I have promised uh, certain people that will be up and running uh, consistently in uh, in the new year, the FMA files. Follow me on Twitter at Dwight Woods and on Instagram at Dwight D. Woods. Oh, and be sure over on the YouTube, when you do subscribe, be sure to hit the notification bell for, so that you know when we uh, when we put the final edit video up there. I, I love jikundo.com. The Quick Skills uh, series, Volume One, is available. Volume Two will be produced in uh, 2020. Um, next, uh, make sure I got it here. Next Friday, which is what the 13th. We will be on with, give me one second, let me pull it up. Um, I think we're going across the pond again next week, as they, as, as they say, are we? Ah, no, no, I'm sorry, that'll be the week after. So next up, next Friday uh, on the 13th, we should be on with uh, Sifu Billy Brown, right? And a lot of you guys know um, who he is. This will be my first time actually speaking to him live. We've, we've known each other for, for a while, but I don't think we've ever uh, spoken. And that should be at our regular time of uh, 6 p.m. So I'll see some of you back here next Friday for the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues or on Wednesday for an issue of the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel. You guys enjoy your weekend wherever you are. Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye now.